Hey everyone, Truth Surge here. Yes, I'm appearing in my own video series. All right, I wanted to show up now and clear something up. Uh, it seems like some people have assumed that this Homer Mark stuff was my original idea and my original research, and it's not. It comes from a book by Dennis R. MacDonald called The Homeric Epics in the Gospel of Mark. It's a brilliant book. If you haven't read it, you've got to read it if you're interested in Christian origins. MacDonald is a Ph.D. in New Testament studies. He teaches at a university, yada, yada, yada. He's a really uh, a smart guy, and he's written another uh, article or book uh, on the Acts of Andrew along these same lines, and he's got two more books coming out um, soon. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to clear this up um, because I don't want people to think that somehow I did all this. I'm just presenting it in my own words and in my own way. So, I'm only going to present one parallel in this video, uh, but it's a doozy. So, without further hesitation, roll it, Johnny! What's, your name? What's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, according to some old crusty English guy. I forget his name. Oh, it doesn't matter. Before we're done with this parallel, we'll find out just how important a name can be. In the Odyssey, a wise woman named Eurycleia washes Odysseus' feet. Eurycleia, who thought she was being kind to a stranger, suddenly recognizes her master from a scar on his leg. She loses her grip on his leg and his foot falls into the basin, spilling water onto the floor. They talk some more, and then she finishes the wash and anoints him with oil. In Mark, an apparently wise woman somehow recognizes an apparent stranger as Jesus the Son of God, and somehow knew that he was not long on this earth. She anointed him with costly ointment after breaking the container open. The disciples complain about the wasted ointment, but Jesus commends the woman's act and claims that because of it, she would gain worldwide fame wherever the gospel was preached. If Mark was remembering the Eurycleia scene when he penned his own anointing scene, it provides an elegant and simple explanation for two oddities that we find in Mark's scene. First, why the woman would need to break an alabaster box to get at the costly spikenard inside, and second, how an anonymous woman could possibly gain worldwide fame. The breaking of the alabaster box is parallel to the spilling of the water onto the floor in Homer's scene. In both cases, there is a recognition of who the hero really is, followed by a spilling of a substance, though not explicitly depicted in Mark's version. And both scenes include an anointing of the hero. Incidentally, both Matthew and Luke delete the part about the woman breaking the alabaster box. Now, this may seem like a rather weak parallel as it stands, but there are two stunning clues that Mark indeed copied this scene to create his own anointing scene, and these two clues will defy the claim of mere coincidence. Clue number one. In the Odyssey, just after Eurycleia anoints Odysseus, they discuss the treachery of the suitors and the servants who sided with the suitors. When heaven has delivered the suitors into your hand, I will give you a list of the women in the house who have been ill-behaved and of those who are guiltless. Here is the chronology of Homer's scene. A woman washing the hero a recognition by the woman of the hero's true identity, the spilling of water onto the floor, an anointing of the hero with oil, and an immediate transition to a view of the suitors and the unfaithful servants. In Mark, just after Jesus is anointed by the woman, Mark also immediately and abruptly transitions to a treacherous view of his antagonists the chief priests, and the unfaithful servant, Judas. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, 
This also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. The scene change in Mark is abrupt and unnatural, but it matches the chronology from Homer's scene perfectly. Judas, who had served Jesus faithfully up to that point, was now siding with the suitors. Oh, sorry, the chief priests. Now, let's do a side-by-side -side and compare Mark and Homer with the scene transition added in. There is a woman and a hero, a recognition of the hero's true identity, the spilling of a substance onto the floor, an anointing of the hero, and the abrupt scene change to the hero's enemies and the unfaithful servant or servants. What is the likelihood that both anointing scenes would match up with a recognition, spilling of a substance, an anointing of the hero, and then transition immediately at the exact spot to a view of the hero's enemies and the betrayal by a trusted insider? Still not convinced? I told you there were two clues. Now for the final clue that will leave no doubt that Mark was indeed copying from the Eurekleia scene. Clue number two. Let's recall the woman who anointed Jesus with the costly ointment. Though anonymous in Mark's story, somehow she would not remain anonymous but would be remembered far and wide for her selfless act. Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. This seems rather strange. How would an unnamed woman become known worldwide? What would people remember her as? That woman that anointed Jesus? It just seems odd to me that Mark would not supply us with her name. But the key to explaining this oddity and proof that Mark was copying from the Odyssey lies in the meaning of the name of the anonymous woman's counterpart, Eurekleia. The anonymous woman in Mark's story would gain far-flung glory for anointing Jesus. In Greek, Eurekleia means... What's in a name? Apparently, more than we realized. That's all for now, but in the next couple of vids, it's going to get even more real. I'll examine even more amazing parallels and explain more oddities of Mark in the process. Valivastanu, uh, that's Telugu for I'll be back.